Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us here on CBS News 24-7. Vice President Kamala Harris has picked Minnesota Governor Tim Walz as her running mate. The 60-year-old military veteran and former public school teacher has a history of appealing to rural moderate voters. He first took to the governor's office in 2019. He's currently serving his second term. Walz also served 12 years in the United States House of Representatives. During his time in Washington, he was the ranking member of the Veterans Affairs Committee. It's a cause close to his heart as a veteran of the Army National Guard. Harris solidified her place as the Democratic nominee last night. She announced Walls as her running mate with less than two weeks to go until the Democratic National Convention and one day before she had to announce her pick to satisfy Ohio's current ballot deadline. Harris and Walls will campaign together for the first time as a ticket in Philadelphia today. That's where they'll kick off a multi-day battleground state tour. CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian joins us now from Washington. Nicole, what sort of reaction are you hearing to the vice president's pick on Capitol Hill? Well, mostly Democrats are cheering Walz as the new running mate for Vice President Kamala Harris. They see him as a good fit, obviously being a former House colleague, uh, many on the House side, especially cheering this move because I believe he's the first House member to join a ticket in more than three decades. So uh, that is significant. But uh, you have everyone from Speaker Emerita Nancy Pelosi, who uh, praised his uh, leadership style and his ability to uh, work well with colleagues during his time in Congress to uh, members of the Minnesota delegation who really have been singing his praises. Uh, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, for instance, calling him a North Star state governor. But on the flip side, you know, many congressional Republicans, uh, you know, as to be expected, are very critical of this pick. They feel that it pulls uh, the ticket further to the left. So you have people like Speaker Mike Johnson, who has decried this as a far left wing ticket. So I imagine that will kind of be the line of attack that we will continue to see uh, both from uh, congressional Republicans as well as uh, Republicans on the campaign trail going forward. But what does his record look like? Does he have an extremely far left record from his time in the, in the Congress? Well, it's certainly mixed. I mean, we know even as governor, uh, he's certainly one of the more progressive governors in this country. But, you know, in terms of Congress, uh, he by and large, uh, voted with his party some 90 percent of the time supporting the Democratic agenda. But there were times where he broke party ranks. Uh, for instance, around 2014, 2015, he cast two votes in favor of constructing the Keystone XL pipeline, which was a pretty controversial project, and uh, especially among environmentalists. So that is something that he uh, sided with. And also, probably most interestingly, is that he uh, cast a vote to hold Eric Holder, who at the time was attorney general, in contempt of Congress for the Fast and Furious uh, investigation. Of course, that was into uh, gun trafficking and that, too, uh, quite controversial uh, in terms of that particular investigation, but certainly notable because it was, in fact, Eric Holder who did much of the vetting for the vice president. But clearly, that wasn't enough to uh, stop him from advancing and obviously now being named as Vice President Harris's running mate. Yeah, to me, that's a fascinating nugget, Nicole, that you've been reporting on, the guy who is being vetted as a VP pick and the choice actually voted to hold in contempt of Congress the guy doing the vetting. Um, so, Nicole, um, we have heard, of course, some of the, the Republican attacks involving uh, Walsh's record, for example, um, during riots in 2020. What are we hearing about that? Yeah, well, there's certainly also some controversy, too, in terms of his handling of some of the riots and demonstrations that broke out in the aftermath of the George Floyd killing. Of course, we saw demonstrations and unrest across the country, but uh, certainly you recall uh, in Minneapolis in particular, uh, things got very violent at times. Some parts of the city uh, were burned. We have heard congressional Republicans uh, try to draw contrast at time between uh, those types of demonstrators, those involved, for instance, in the Black Lives Matter movement uh, in 2020 to the January 6 rioters, that, uh, you know, they are treated with a, a double standard. But uh, that being said, obviously, different issues, different uh, motivations, but um, certainly that is likely to draw scrutiny, not just necessarily from congressional Republicans, but potentially from some Democrats as well. Nicole Killian, thank you.